come on. We all know that's not what a horse girl should look like. Seriously, what are otaku into these days? The cold opener actually did its job this week and previewed elements from this episode, with Yuki Sensei being some generic looking dude. We then cut over to the Beholdo, where we learned that there was going to be a summer festival and ah. Uh, Oyaji, of course, did his usual shtick and tried to warm his way into the festivities, hoping to score some Yukata fan service. You know, as long as you have the right ingredients, frog's legs don't sound like they're that hard to make. Thankfully, Hazuki shut the laptop, and that would be the last we'd see of the pervert toad for the rest of the episode. Give this girl an award. Anyway, they managed to get a booth at said festival, and thus we're making some goods for it with their usual pink Play-Doh. And as usual, no one could figure out what Doremi was making. <laughs> well, to be fair, it looks better than whatever guy puts on his head. At the festival, they actually made a fairly clever setup with a dark game where players would have to win a prize rather than actually buy it. Well, you still have to kind of respect them for understanding the benefits of the carny life. So just be careful around Liam Neeson. And yeah, their darts use plungers instead of needles. Understandable, this is a booth run by kids. I mean, it makes more sense than it does in four kids is one piece. And speaking of poor business practices, in order to save money on buying an actual motor to spin the wheel, our protagonist instead opted for slave labor with the ferry partners doing all of the work. Predictably, this didn't work out so well as their little bodies didn't exactly have the best cardio. You all should really consider joining the ferry workers union, pretty sure Davey's the head of it. Some of their classmates played, including Kotake, Reika, and... The Stooges. And unfortunately, Hazuki was a fan of theirs, so she wasn't going to close their lids anytime soon. During all of this, Reika revealed that there was a pit pocker on the loose who allegedly only went after pretty ladies. Hey Reika, you ever want to be pen pals with a mermaid? I'm pretty sure you two will get along real well. Anyway, they each claimed the prize, with Kotage notably taking Doremi's pineapple lock seed. Following this, they spotted Yuki Sensei, I'm guessing shortly after that cold opener, and of course, they assumed that she was on a date with Mr. Generic. Thus, they decided to tailor, along with Seki Sensei, who was just there and was encouraging the stalking of her co worker. Yeah, lady, I'm pretty sure stuff like this is why you don't have a boyfriend yet. Eventually, they noticed that their teacher's wallet was hanging out of her bag and in perfect position for the pitpocketer. Doremi decided to warn her about it, only to have said culprit run into both her and Seki Sensei. He managed to snatch the latter's wallet that was just kind of hanging out in her helmet. Seriously, at least cover that thing up, lady. And Doremi believed that he had also gotten her witch's tap. Which, to be fair, is probably the far more valuable commodity. But in actuality, she just dropped it, as was immediately confirmed here, which, in my opinion, wasn't the right call for this episode, as it ends up making the following scenes of them trying to find a thief feel rather pointless, as we already know where the tap actually is. Personally, I think it would have been better if they had held off on showing these scenes, and instead flash back to them later in the episode, especially considering the hilarious twist we're going to get. Speaking of which, some random pooch found the tap, and... Oh, so this is Teatinu's origin story. Now, if only we could get one for the Bogans. Back with Yuki Sensei and her quote unquote boyfriend, they were actually on the lookout for the pitpocketer because, and I don't think I'm spoiling anything here, he was an undercover cop and Sensei was a decoy. Sure enough, their plan was working, but the Ojamajo had also tracked the perp and cast Zawaldo to try and catch him. And yet again, they forgot none of them were Dio Brando, and the spell ended up working against them. <laughs> well, to be fair, considering all the trespassing and parking violations they've likely committed, you're not exactly wrong there, dude. Also, I just realized, this guy's also voiced by Jonochi's BA. In fact, both of these episodes were written by Atsushi Maikawa, who would later go on to write a bunch of episodes for Duel Monsters. Coincidence? I think not! 
Anyway, while Draymi couldn't find her tap on the pit pocketer, she quickly found the real thief, which again, I think would have been a funnier twist if it hadn't been revealed to us already. That's actually a good question. I mean, it's been established that they need to get the clothes on before time runs out or else they'll just disappear. I'm pretty sure not only would a dog have a hard time getting that on, but most of them would more likely shake it off because they don't like to wear clothes. I feel bad for my sister's dogs. Anyway, the other Ojama shall support Doremi by once again turning her into Detective Noble's loyal partner and then into an MLP reject. I swear to god, I better not see furry jokes in the comment section. Oh, like that would ever stop them. Also, I'm pretty sure most ponies still make horse sounds rather than just say pony. I mean, the only instance I can think of such a case would be... PONY! Hopefully that should quell the furries. Anyway, the reason for the form change was because the pickpocket had taken a bike that incidentally had the dog in it. Thus, both Doremi and the cop needed some faster feet, so... <laughs> okay, calm down, Janochi. We all know that luck isn't going to win you every duel. Needless to say, this was arguably the most insane finale to any episode of this series so far, complete with an extra survey of Doremi torture. Honestly, it was so insane that I didn't even notice some of this repeated animation on the first viewing. Still, at least it's better than some of Hasbro's recent usages of the MLP license. Eventually, the chase ended when the dog jumped off the bike and into the arms of its owner, who I think got possessed by a demon in this scene. <laughs> The power of Christ compels you! Oh, daddy! As a result, it dropped the tap that Doreen managed to retrieve, and the pit pocket crashed the bike. He was finally stopped, possibly thanks to Doremi's charm and Kotaki's skateboard. I'm starting to think the source of Doremi's magic is actually the power of Rube Goldberg. With that, the episode ended with Yuki-sensei and the cop clearing things up with everyone and having a good sitcom laugh over it. And later, Kotaki received a certificate for helping catch the thief, and Doremi rightfully pointed out that they helped too. I mean, at the very least, they knew Doremi bumping into him set things into motion, but whatever, cheesy fade out. This was all kinds of insane, and I kind of loved it. Hell, while I did bring them up, I actually didn't really mind some of the leaps in logic peppered throughout this one, and could actually enjoy most of the festivities. The animation was incredibly energetic, and the festival setting was used very well in my opinion, though I don't think I've ever seen a point chase happen in one of those. Of the many sort of archetypal anime stories out there, summer festival episodes are kind of played out. So if they want to stand out, they have to do something different, which this certainly did. First, I did like that the Ozamajo actually made their own booth at this festival, showing that they could be a little more proactive than others, regardless of their slave labor. And of course, the extended chase at the end was all kinds of stupid fun. In general, there was a lot of that throughout this episode, complemented with some good, exaggerated animation. They did cut a few corners, like characters just suddenly going totally stationary, and as I said, repeat animation, but then they showed Doremi Pie diving for a tap, and it's soon all forgotten. And while his subplot with Yuki-sensei was kind of forgettable, the cop character was a lot of fun, mostly thanks to Hiroki Takahashi's great performance, which was leagues better than his last role. My one actual complaint was, as I pointed out, revealing where the tap was a little too early. Again, I think it would provide more laughs if we were just as surprised to see the dog wearing Doremi's witch's garments as her. While I do think Atsushi Maikawa can do slapstick well, I do think he needs to work on the build-up to some of his jokes a little more. That little bit aside though, this was still a very fun little festival episode. Speaking of festivals, by the time this video goes up, it should be St. Patrick's Day here in the States. I would wear some green, but I'm in front of a green screen, so, um, yeah, no. Still, I hope everyone has a safe St. Patty's Day, and if you don't go overboard with the green beer, maybe just enjoy some corned beef instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's a and until next time, though, fair for not, my friends, and, um, yeah, don't worry, I'll take this guy out to the glue factory.